warm welcome, please, for Ron Short. Thank you, Steve. Welcome, to you. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity to give you a brief synopsis of what the ODEF is all about. Uh, first of all, I'd like to highlight the fact that uh, the open group's vision is boundless information flow. And obviously, to achieve that, an underlying capability is interoperability. Uh, in addition, the open group has making standards work as a tagline. I'd like to suggest that the ODEF, or Open Data Element Framework, is fundamentally a framework that enables making standards work. And so if you take nothing else away from this uh, summary presentation, please take that away. Next slide. Okay. Ah, there we go. So I'll summarize what the problem is how ODEF uh, helps categorize concepts, and in summary there, I'm gonna try and suggest that it is analogous to the periodic table. Uh, give a brief example that was presented in Austin of how ODEF could be used to, use to categorize information within the healthcare industry, and then some of the benefits. Obviously, many people, especially the healthcare folks, will indicate that there are too many standards. And when you look across those standards, there are uh, conflicting data. They're, they don't establish common terminology across those standards. So there's a need for categorization. In the real world, you've got the elements found in the universe. And, of course, for that, you've got the periodic table. The periodic table helps you categorize all of the elements that we've found in the universe. Uh, and it's essential because when you start combining things, you then end up with compounds, molecules, and compounds. The... Uh, a data categorization system, I'd, I'd like to suggest that in the same way that you've got elements of the universe, you've got data elements within the enterprise. And so having a framework that can categorize data elements is essential to being able to use them and to analyze them. So a data categorization system should be able to use existing vocabularies and that's where existing data standards, you should be able to use existing data standards. It provides a basic grammar for data descriptions, and it provides a consistent and repeatable method for data analysis and tagging. It should be consistent with your current uh, implementation systems and use RDF. So the open data element framework provides an index and method for analyzing and tagging data elements. It's partially based on the previous standard known as UDEF, but there's some substantial differences. Uh, for one thing, roles uh, as well as object classes and properties will be available. And then the most significant difference is supporting plugins. So rather than a one size fits all, which is what UDEF tried to be, ODEF will take existing standards as plugins. And I'll highlight that here in a moment. Within the ODEF, just a few, and there's, there's no limit to how many plugins could be added to the ODEF. But the United Nations has a standard product and services codes. Um, and the United Nations also has types of units and measures known as REC 20. In the healthcare area, you've got SNOMED, an HL7, an ICD-10, an ICD-11. And within the open group, 
They help create a federal health information model. There's many other standards out there, but there's uh, EIA 36, which is config management of systems. And I'm gonna suggest that all of these could be plugins to the ODEF. At the Austin conference in July, I went through a detailed example of how the federal health information model has data element concepts in it and how those could be transformed into concepts that are easy for people to uh, interpret and going through the taxonomy, if you will, of the model itself, you've got for example, health concern, it's a problem type and a diagnosis, and it has a date that it was diagnosed, and that's from the federal health information model, and that total concept, which when you go through that model, can be represented by a unique identifier, which is similar to an IP address, a number dot number dot number is a way of representing that same concept with a unique ID that computers can respond to, whereas the human then would be able to read the words that make it understandable of what's there in the, in the concept name. And so within the healthcare industry, uh, there are some object classes and, for instance, various roles of persons. Uh, there's an object class called condition where you'd find things like diagnosis and symptoms and so forth processes for a medical procedure, product for the medical devices and drugs that uh, might be prescribed, events that might be relevant to the medical, uh, such as a flood, earthquake, in other words, what happened that caused the problem, enterprises such as the insurance carrier and hospital and so forth, and substances that might be relevant to healthcare, dust, carbon monoxide. So those are the fundamental object classes that that uh, you know, could all have plugins associated with them to deal with the healthcare industry. So some of the benefits of applying ODEF to these concepts is that uh, you can accommodate plugins from multiple, there, re there really is no limit, uh, existing data standards. So it's not competing with existing standards. It's a way of making existing standards work together. So you want to know that you're in the healthcare that you're looking at ICD-10 uh, code as opposed to an HL-7 code. And so that's given to you by the, by the way the syntax is for the name as well as the ID of the ODEF. Uh, so you've got an, an, an ODEF name that's easily understood. It's, it's, uh, it's just simply an English string that or it can be any other language, by the way, uh, that ODEF identifier can then be represented not only in English, but in any other natural language. Um, but that identifier would stay the same across all languages. Um, and so the ODEF identifier provides also an opportunity then to reduce the latency and bandwidth required of moving that information through the network. Uh, and then the ODEF object classes provide a consistent starting point for categorizing uh, information, whether it's healthcare or any other domain. And that concludes my brief summary of the ODEF. And I do want to point out that it was officially published in May of this year. So many people have, have you know, have asked, what's ODEF? I hadn't heard of it. Hopefully this satisfies that question. <laughs>